God says when we encounter tough times. Well, there was an old saying, the day we were born, we begin to die. Either we acknowledge that or we believe that or not, the fact of the matter is, it's true. But what are we going to do to the time we have left in this world? Because if we don't change the way we think, the way we function, and the way we deal with issues, the same experience will perpetuate over and over again and everything will remain the same. And I hope you won't regret everything when time comes. What God says in the Bible, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 to 17, Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your heart, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense of anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who are reviled, your good behavior Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. At the point when experience difficult stretches, let us not be so wrecked to where we feel irredeemable and deterred. Let us not take off from our concerns, however, rather seek Jesus. We should run to Jesus Christ, run to the person who has defeated the world, the person who is our asylum and strength, the person who advises us to call upon Him in our difficult times, the person who heals our wounds and diseases, the person who turns our situation around for the good cause. In these present days, we often find ourselves in situations where our faith is put to the test and we must decide how we will respond. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6-7, to So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire test and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on a day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Regardless of what your difficulty may be, be solid in faith. Try not to permit yourself to be moved on the grounds that when you let go God's certain commitment, you will undoubtedly get cleared up into the frenzy of this world. Jesus Christ is our main sure establishment. He's our steadfast anchor. You see, faith is necessary for every believer because it's only when you have faith that you can please God. Now, let me ask you, do you really have faith? Or do you rely on your own judgment, your reasoning, or what your eyes can see? Are you living by faith? Are you walking by faith? At the point when you ponder a portion of the legends of confidence in the Holy Book and each of the preliminaries they went through, you see that they shared one thing in common. They continued to trust in God. They had unflinching confidence in the Lord and they were solid in faith. And let me tell you something, it takes faith to follow Jesus Christ. It takes faith to keep pushing and representing the gospel. By faith, the walls of Jericho tumbled down. By faith, Paul and Silas were bitten, tied up, and detained. However, they actually commended God. The three Hebrew young men refused to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar, all because they had such a strong faith. These are extraordinary instances of individuals who held fast and confided in the Lord in any event when all the chances were against them. Their faith was not shaken, their faith was not broken, since they realized that the God whom they serve is greater 
more prominent and more remarkable than any person or things else who they could face. This large number of individuals were pushed to ask in light of the preliminaries they went through and the hindrances they confronted. Let us be encouraged to do the same. Let us not take off from our concerns, yet rather run to Him. Let's run to Jesus Christ. In the book of Matthew, Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. That's why we can stand confidently in Him. That's why we can cling to Him. Let us not be sick to get by, yet let us be trying to have the effect. Allow us to keep up with the cement, our relationship with Jesus. What's more, be reminded not to settle on a long-lasting choice over brief situation. Try not to permit a snapshot of dissolution to reach into determination over maturely sense. In such a case that you continue to recognize Jesus and be accommodating to Him. Jesus generally has the way for our situation. He generally has replied to all our inquiry. Furthermore, don't agree to second best. Try not to lower your norm and never exchange your timeless guilt from Christ for a momentarily delight. Let us pray. Help us not to fear the future, but to boldly trust that you are in control. When our emotions plunge us down and when we are in despair, in times when we can't talk and don't know what to say, help us to be still and know that you are God and be our comforter, our healer, and bring us peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let me speak this blessing to you all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. God bless everyone. Amen.